In today's episode, I want to talk to you a little bit about the neuroscience behind narcissistic abuse because what happens is we actually have physiological brain changes that happen during the trauma of narcissistic abuse. And I want to share with you, I've got my trusty brain model here to help you understand maybe why you're feeling some of these symptoms of this damage to the brain, these physiological changes that happen when we go through any kind of trauma actually, but specifically what we're talking about in today's episode obviously is narcissistic abuse. So my name is Caroline Strawson, I'm a positive psychology trauma coach and somatic therapist and literally my life's mission now is to help people just like yourself heal from the trauma of narcissistic abuse because I've been exactly where you are and I want to help and support you, to give you hope, to give you guidance, to know that you are heard and seen and believed so that you can move from post-traumatic stress to post-traumatic growth because it is possible. It might not seem like it right now. It might be this long dark tunnel. <laughs> I can relate to it. I thought I was locked in this long dark tunnel but I would love you to see me as maybe that little chink of light at the end of that long dark tunnel so that you know where you are right now doesn't mean it has to be like this forevermore. If you are new here please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the bell so that you never miss one of my episodes because I drop episodes every single week to help you heal from the trauma of narcissistic abuse because let's face it it is trauma. So for us to understand trauma and what goes on in our brain in our body I wanted to show you actually my little brain model that I use. So I do a lot of teaching. So I have a um, trauma-informed coaching certification and narcissistic trauma-informed coaching certification and narcissistic abuse specialist certification because I believe that knowledge does give us power. And particularly for us like myself who work in this field, it's really important for us to understand things like trauma and narcissistic abuse through a trauma-informed lens. You know, I've worked with many psychologists, psychotherapists, psychiatrists who actually don't get taught trauma, body work, what goes on in the brain and body at a deep nervous system level. They don't get taught so much about the nervous system and what we call polyvagal theory when they learn all of this stuff. So for me it's really important for us to be educated of our own body. You know we don't get taught this stuff. We get taught say about our reproductive system at school don't we? But what we don't get taught is stuff that I think is super important for you to know because it will really help lift maybe some shame you might be feeling about some of the things that you might be feeling right now. So this is literally our brain sliced in half. This is the front part. And then really I want to talk to you about three main elements of our brain and the changes that can start to happen for us. This is the front part of our brain which is what we call the neocortex. It's where we have that logical, rational part of our brain. Really ideally where we want to be the majority of the time when we're dealing with the narcissist. But normally that's long down on our healing journey where we can see their behavior more rationally, more logically and recognize it's definitely about them. It's no reflection of us. And whilst many of us will know that, very often we're not dealing with the narcissist coming from that front part of the brain. Where we're dealing with the narcissist is in this part here which is called our limbic system or our emotional part of the brain. Now that limbic system contains two structures that you may have heard of called the hippocampus and the amygdala. And they're just in here, in this part of your brain, in that emotional brain. Now what happens is, when we perceive threat and danger, we really shift into our limbic system and down into our brain stem, and that's why we end up feeling the way that we do. This is why when we talk about trauma, trauma isn't in the brain here, trauma is literally in the body. Trauma is about our interpretation and perception of other people's behavior and that what we then say to ourselves and our inability and capacity to be able to cope in that moment. So the narcissist isn't actually the trauma as such. What the trauma of narcissistic abuse is, is what you are saying to yourself on a really deep nervous system level about the behavior of the narcissist. You know, the narcissist is behaving like this because I'm not good enough. That becomes a pain which takes you back to some childhood experiences where in those moments where you have perceived and interpreted other people's behavior, parents, teachers, friends, peers, 
in a certain way that maybe I'm not good enough or I'm worthless or I'm not important or I'm unlovable that creates what we call an inner child wound and everything becomes about your system for not feeling like that. Now the amygdala in our limbic system is like our smoke detector. It is literally scanning our world constantly for cues of danger because it's wanting to keep you safe. Sadly as human beings we're not on this planet with the sole intention of being happy, successful, or wealthy, unfortunately. We are driven by survival and to be in the least amount of pain. That's box ticked. If that's how we're living our life, we're in the least pain and we're alive, great, job done. But of course, we don't necessarily wanna live our life like that because it doesn't mean we're not in pain with that and it doesn't mean that we're maybe happy or in loving relationships. But the brain isn't really bothered about that at that stage. It's just like, hey, you're alive and you're in the least amount of pain. So let yourself know right now, wherever you are right now, your inner system is doing an amazing job of keeping you safe from what it perceives to be dangerous that would cause you more pain. That doesn't mean you aren't in pain. It means your inner system thinks you are in less pain than something else. That's why it's keeping you stuck in these trauma responses because it believes that we need to stay stuck like this because the pain is gonna come. It's gonna be even more. So we've gotta get curious about that because likely as a child, that would have been good, okay? Needed. But as an adult, we have different choices. We are able to make different decisions. So this limbic system with the amygdala, our fear center, okay? Scanning for cues and danger. When you have been through trauma as a child, as a teenager, as an adult, what happens is the amygdala starts to increase in size. It's almost like it wants to become this super powered amygdala, really making sure there's gonna be no danger. Because almost the more trauma you have had, the bigger the amygdala is gonna grow because it really wants to protect you and almost get in first to make sure that you don't feel any more pain than you need to feel. So that amygdala then starts to become really hypervigilant, really looking around for cues of danger. And what normally you would be able to cope with maybe years ago, you really got a heightened reaction now because it is really getting ready for any danger that may happen to you and it wants to be almost like a just in case for you. So it increases in size to really help you with this. So again, we are amazing as human beings. Now the hippocampus is like our long-term memory center in here. And the hippocampus then, as we are living our life, it almost passes through that hippocampus and moves from short-term memory into long-term memory and it time stamps things into the past then. Now what happens when we've been through trauma is the hippocampus starts to shrink. So the amygdala increases in size to scan for danger and the hippocampus starts to shrink. Now when that hippocampus starts to shrink, what happens then is past experiences still remain very, very present. So when maybe the narcissist says or does something, because it still hasn't been processed maybe from an experience you had as a five-year-old, a 10-year-old, it's taking you back to being that five and 10-year-old and you're reacting in that moment. So it's working in conjunction with the amygdala. So let's say the narcissist says something that's really mean and horrible. You don't react as that adult then in that moment. What happens is because you've had experiences and memories from maybe you were five or 10, where maybe your parent or someone around you has treated you in a certain way that maybe really formed that wound of not being good enough, in that moment, because it's not passed through the hippocampus and time stamped into the past, your whole body goes back to that experience. So you're no longer the adult in that moment dealing with the narcissist. You've literally gone all the way back to being that five-year-old little girl, that 10-year-old little girl, that 15-year-old little boy even in those scenarios. And you react in that moment because it's not been time stamped and moved into a long-term memory, filed away so that you can look back on these experiences and know, yeah, I did feel like that when they said those things to me, but I know in the present, the narcissist is no reflection of me. That's not what's happening. It's because that hippocampus hasn't time stamped it and filed it away into the past, your body is constantly reliving, not remembering. This is why body work is really important when we're dealing and healing trauma, because we have to work in the body and process that through the body to literally time stamp that in the hippocampus into the past so you can remain present as the adult 
dealing with the narcissist, not dealing with the narcissist as a five-year-old or a 10-year-old. That's where that dysregulation and activation occurs. The other consequences of a hippocampus that shrinks, and yeah, I'm sure many of you are gonna relate to all of this, is brain fog, forgetfulness. Now, I used to have such brain fog. I love reading books, you know. As I look in my study right now, I've got tons of books. I love, love, love reading, okay? But when I was going through my healing process, and even in my relationship, I stopped reading. I literally would get a book and my eyes would be darting all over the place and I couldn't focus. I literally couldn't focus on the book. I might had such brain fog that I couldn't in that moment read a full page. I might read three lines and that would be it. My focus would be elsewhere. I literally had a complete lack of focus. My memory was going, I couldn't remember things. And all I kept doing with the brain fog and the forgetfulness was hype more shame on myself. I felt even worse. So stupid, so weak, what's wrong with me? All of this criticism of myself, where actually it was a normal, natural, biological response to my perception of threat and danger from the narcissist. My amygdala increasing in size, my hippocampus shrinking, all doing the right things for me as a trauma perspective within my brain. The hypervigilance I felt, literally, again, you might relate to this. If I was watching TV, for instance, okay, I couldn't just sit and watch a whole program. Mm, no, 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 I'd be jittery. I'd got a lot of sympathetic energy in my body, okay? Undischarged sympathetic energy. It's another thing when I work with people, we have to discharge this excess energy in our body to complete these response cycles in our body. But I'd sit there, I'd have my remote control, and let's say I'd watched um, 10 minutes of it and an advert would come up. I couldn't just sit and wait for the advert. I'd be flicking on that remote. I literally, I couldn't just watch something. I'd have to keep flicking. And I'd almost feel like my eyes would be darting around and I couldn't focus and I would just be sitting there and all of a sudden I'd be exhausted and then I would go to bed, get up, next day, exactly the same. Brain fog, forgetfulness, jitteriness, hypervigilance, freeze, not wanting to get out of bed, and then the next day would be the same, and the next day, like Groundhog Day, right? But all of this was down to those physiological changes, and then the brainstem element was literally going into my body, and that felt sense of danger. You know, I kind of knew I wasn't in any danger, but my body was going, ah, danger, danger, danger. But it wasn't actual danger, it was my perception of danger, the pain that I had felt as that little girl of not feeling good enough. And that over the years had led to these physiological changes that had happened in my brain, all about protecting me. All of these things that were happening were happening because my body was doing an amazing job. My brain was doing an amazing job of trying to keep me safe from what my brain and body perceived to be too painful, too dangerous, too much for me. So all of these changes were happening to literally try and protect me with loving intention. But if we don't understand what goes on in our brain, because of our neocortex, we start to think we're stupid or weak, but we're not. You are not stupid, you are not weak. You have just got physiological brain changes because of the trauma of narcissistic abuse, likely also going back to various traumatic events and experiences from your childhood. That doesn't mean it's these big, big things, maybe like abuse, that may well have happened too. Could have been your parents got a divorce. Could have been you had an, an emotional parent even. You know, you will make these little interpretations in these micro moments as a child, for instance, that can still lead to trauma for you. Things that you start to say about yourself, I'm not good enough, I am worthless, I'm unlovable, I'm not important. All these create these inner child wounds which become then your perception of danger and everything about your nervous system then is about distracting, minimize, moving you away from feeling that pain. And it's literally, the amygdala is scanning all anyone that's gonna make you feel like this. Oh, is anyone gonna make you feel like this? You have protector parts coming up trying to diminish, move you away from feeling that pain. Your hippocampus shrinks because it's literally on alert because you're not the adult in the present, you're the five-year-old, you're the 10-year-old. So it's all doing a wonderful job. The beauty of all of this is, just because we have these physiological changes does not mean we can't reverse them. So this damage that happens to your brain, I want you to know these are 
reversible. When we work and do that body work, when we process, we really create and close those response cycles. So, you know, for me, it's doing things like internal family systems, looking at the different parts of us, somatic experiencing, really processing that through the body, using brain spotting, finding trauma capsules in our brain that we can literally release. So we can start the hippocampus, time stamped, into the past. I'm now in the present, I'm not in the past. The amygdala starts to go, yeah, this is safe now. This is safe. This is why we have to go really slowly. What often happens when people start to heal from trauma is they go too quick, too quick. Think of it like a tap when you're healing. You turn that tap on too much and go too quickly, you flood your nervous system and you will shut down and it will stay like this. Think of it like a tap, drip by drip by drip. Because that amygdala needs to know at every single stage, hmm, okay, yeah, this seems safe. This seems okay now. Time stamped into the past. So we have to do it slowly. That doesn't mean we're not going quickly. If you rush all of this work, you're gonna flood your nervous system. And what will happen is your amygdala will stay on alert and your hippocampus will have not filed away, time stamped into the past, these past experiences. We need to look at these past experiences, process them so that your brain and body know they were never your fault time stamp them into the past, file them back away so we can slowly start to reverse these physiological changes that happen in your brain. And if you want to learn more about neuroscience and that, you know, this is the work that I do. It's not just about affirmations and feeling good enough. Yeah, that's important. It's the body work. It's the neuroscience. It's really understanding narcissistic abuse through a trauma-informed lens, really working deep in that nervous system. That's where we're gonna to start to get the changes. You can say all the right things all of the time. Someone triggers you, your body, emotions will override logic every single time, every single time. So I hope that helps. So if you're forgetful, brain fog, no, that could be the hippocampus shrunk. I will put in one caveat here though as well, because this was the other thing that I recognize. If you are a woman in your late 30s onwards, Brain fog can also be a symptom of perimenopause. So I just wanna kind of put that in there as well because I think it's really, really important to recognize, you know, not everything has to always be related to trauma. So we always want to keep an open mind with all of this. But again, if you've had narcissistic abuse, if you've had trauma, bear that in mind, those physiological changes can happen in the brain. But also if you're a woman in your sort of late 30s onwards, also know that maybe go and get a hormone test, you know, check out your FSH levels to see where you are maybe, because it could also be perimenopause. Or it could be both, okay? It could be a double whammy of all of that too. So you want to make sure that you're getting the right support in those areas to emotional trauma work and maybe um, some other um, work maybe with your um, healthcare provider as well with all of that too. So just know, keep, keep an open mind with all of those too. So I hope that really helps. You know, if you want to learn more about neuroscience with this, then obviously check out the show notes, how you can get hold of me. You know, I, I literally have a 12 step healing program with this too, where we literally dive into all of this, where you really start to understand your nervous system. So important. You know, I can't believe we don't get taught this stuff at school about how your nervous system operates. So, you know, if we had all of this education, we would have so much less shame in our society today because we'd understand why people behave in the way that they do. We stop saying, oh, what's wrong with them to what happened to them for them to show up like that far more compassionate society. So I hope you enjoyed that. I hope it's really helped you understand your body because you're an amazing machine. You know, you are doing an amazing job. We just need to get curious about what is it then that your brain is so stuck in with your body about you not feeling? Because I hazard a guess you could be able to cope now. It doesn't mean it's not nice and doesn't mean it's not a challenge, but you can cope now and you would be able to, but we need to process that through the body. So take care, my friends, and I will see you on the next episode on my YouTube channel. Don't forget, hit that subscribe and bell so you don't miss any episodes. Lots of love to you all.